configure a barostat procedure, press the menu button, then press the configure barostat button. Once you do this, you're now in the barostat configuration screen. On the screen at the top, you'll see three graphs. Each of these graphs represents a step. There are up to ten steps, and you can scroll through each step by pressing the arrow buttons. To configure each individual step, you select the step you want to configure, like so. It'll then be highlighted. And then you've got two options. You've got options of configuring here. So the first option is to configure the volume. So this is the volume it will inflate to. So as you update that, you'll see it updates on the graph. And then you've got an option of the rate. You can inflate at a rate of 20 milliliters a minute, 40 milliliters a minute, or 60 milliliters a minute. Then you also have two other options. One option is that once you've deflated or inflated to your target volume, do you want to deflate before going on to the next step? If you do, you enable deflate, and then a little prompt comes up asking you how long you want to wait after deflate. So what this is, is once you have inflated the balloon and then deflated the balloon, how much time do you want to wait after deflating before progressing to the next step? So you can select this here and this tells you the number of seconds you will wait before moving on to the next step. Now, once you have inflated to the step, you have another option, which is wait for patient to input. Now, if you want um, the patient to enter a sensitivity value, once you reach the target volume for that step, leave this enabled. The step will not progress to the next step until the patient has entered a value. If you don't want this, you can disable it, and then you can select how many seconds you want to wait at that volume before deflating. So here we have it at 10 seconds, we can bring that down to 5 seconds. So what will happen for this procedure now, for this step, is that we'll inflate to 5 at a rate of 60, we'll wait there for 5 seconds, then we'll deflate, and then we'll wait for 5 seconds after that. So then to configure more steps, you press each step and configure them like so. Noting that Waiting for patient input and deflating is a global change, so if you make a change in any of these steps for enabling or disabling either wait for patient input or deflate, this will um, be a global one, so every single step will either inflate or and stop or inflate and wait for patient input. Apart from this setting screen, there's also another setting screen, which you can get by pressing this button here. In this screen, it tells you the title of the procedure. It tells you the current step you're on. It gives you an option to reset the step back to the start. It gives you an option to select a range. So, although you've configured steps 1 to 10, you might be only interested in maybe executing step 2 to 5. So, if you are, you just press that, select 2, and select 5. And now you're only going to execute steps 2 to 5. You can enter the patient resting pressure then as well. So by pressing this, enter the resting pressure that you've recorded yourself. And then in pressure scale, this is for the graph on pressure that will be on the screen that we'll see in a moment. So this tells us how much you need. So we can decide for this that the pressure graph will either go to 50, 100, or 150. We'll set it at 100. Down at the bottom then, you have options of importing procedures that you have already saved previously, or exporting the procedure. So let's say I had done something here that I wanted to save for again. I press the export button, it then asks me for a title, so I'll just put the title in for this as test1, and press OK. So it tells me now that it's been successfully exported to the key, and now I see it here, test1.barrow. There's some other tests that I had here before, so if I wanted to import that, I just press that, press the import button, and confirm, and it's now imported that there for me. So I can carry this USB key with me and bring it to another unit and just import this procedure so that it's the same procedure for everyone. So when you're finished your configuring, you press the Save Changes button, save the name of the procedure, and press OK. Now that we've configured a Barostat procedure, we can now execute one. To do so, you press the Menu button and then Go to Barostat mode. This is now the Barostat mode screen. The graph at the top shows you volume in blue and pressure in yellow. 
and the graph at the bottom shows you the steps that you're executing. So if you remember in the setup, we said that we were only going to execute steps 2 to 5. So you can see here that we've only got step 2, 3, 4, and 5. If we went back into our settings and change that to be 1 to 10, saved it, you can see now we've got steps 1 to 10, and you can see the volumes that we're targeting to the whole way. So, to start a procedure, we just press the start button. So what this is going to do now, is it's going to inflate to the target volume, which is 5, which it has done. It waits for the 5 seconds, which we've configured, then it deflates. And now once it deflates, it'll wait there for 5 seconds, which is what we have configured. Before moving on to the next step, which will inflate to 10 milliliters. At any time during the procedure, the patient can enter a sensitivity value and this will stop the pump. So on their keypad, if they press a number, let's say 2, you'll see pause appears here on screen to let us know the procedure is paused. We see the number 2 up here at the top of the screen, letting us know that that's the value. And the line here shows us what the pressure and volume was at the time they enter that. So to continue on, we just press the resume button. And for the remainder of the procedure, we will see that 2 was the sensitivity value that was entered for that step. If part of the way through the procedure we want to change a setting, we can do so. We just press the stop button, menu, configure bar stat, and we can go in and make some changes. So let's say we want to stop deflating and we want to select a wait for patient input. We can do that. Resume. So from now on, when we get to our input volume, it's going to stop and it's going to be waiting for a patient input and it will not progress to the next step until we give the input. So you'll see on screen now a message waiting for patient input. And I cannot resume until patient input has been given. So with the keypad again, if I press a number, let's say this time I'll enter a sensitivity of 3. I get a beep to let me know that my sensitivity value has been shown. It's also in there, and now I can resume. So on screen you'll see the pressure, which you just see there now moving, as I'm squeezing the balloon in orange, and you'll also see blue, which is the volume that we're currently at. So again, we're waiting for patient input. So we're going to enter 4 this time. It shows me that that was the pressure at the time. Press resume. and we can progress like this for the entire procedure. Here you'll see the D-min CSA main screen. Pressing that, we'll also be able to get values for distensibility and compliance. And then pressing it again, we'll be able to get values for tension. And you'll see with tension, it's also giving us the resting pressure that we had input. If you want to change the resting pressure that you had input, you can do so. You just have to Go back into the menu, configure Baristat, and change your resting pressure there. Every time we've entered a sensitivity value on the keyboard, an image has been taken, a snapshot. So if we go into compare, we can see these. The snapshot's name would be underscore, then the sensitivity value, and then another underscore. So when we enter 2 for sensitivity value, it's underscore 0, 2, underscore and 4 underscore 0 4 underscore. So if we want to see the difference between the sensitivity value of 3 and 4, we can press both of those. Press OK. It will bring us back to the normal DS screen where we'll see the pressures for both, we'll see the volumes for both, and we'll see the diameters for both. And then clearing compare will bring us back into our Barristat screen. While we're inflating, you can also press the plus key, and with the plus key is a stop, so that's the patient saying stop, stop the syringe pump. If the patient presses the plus key twice, the syringe pump will deflate. So 
for example. See the two exclamation marks, letting us know that we've pressed it twice, and now it's defending. If we press the plus again, it will stop. And if you want, you can resume from there.